Hello everyone, and welcome back to my complete career run through of Kerbal Space Program 0.23. And, well, this is our tech tree so far. We have Jeb Kerman stranded on Duna. However, he seems to be fine there. And the priority probably should be just plunging on ahead, getting more science, in which case we might want to explore a new system. Now, my success with Ike. Uh, has led me to get interested in perhaps landing a mission on Gilly uh, in the hope of eventually purchasing some nuclear propulsion which will get us to more far-flung places in the Kerbal system. So uh, we've only got 80 signs so we're not going to be purchasing anything new here right now. Let's go to the VAB and see what kind of mission I can patch up for for Gilly. Okay so this is our venerable Theta Lander and there are a number of modifications I would like to do to this this particular lander. First of all, it, it actually needs another ladder here. and But it, I think it should be fine to use for for uh, Gilly. It might be stupendously overpowered though. Hmm. Ah, oh, that's an interesting point. Maybe I should use some RCS instead. We've, we've got RCS now. I haven't used it for anything yet. Uh, no, I want one of these. Alright, that's fine. Adding RCS. Ha. Huh. I had originally planned some RCS on this, but took it off because I deemed it too heavy. But perhaps a restoration of that is in order. I mean, uh, Gilly landing is nothing like uh, Duna landing, obviously. Not that we've actually managed one of those successfully. But... Oh, where do I even put the RCS ports? This is sort of packed, isn't it? These batteries are in my way. Uh, but we sort of need them. Perhaps not so many. Ah, oh, that should be fine. Looks a little bit obstructed by these, though. So perhaps move these down a bit. Ah, uh, the... Okay, no, that's fine. Right there. Alright, that'll do. Okay, so we've got some RCS on here, which should help us land on Gilly. Uh, I don't want to replace the engine with something weaker, because we do need to boost back to Kerbin as well. So it's not just a one-way thing. Um, keeping the batteries on the Science Junior. I just recorded an episode of the Institute for Kerbal Studies and the batteries just overheated and exploded. So, so I'm a little bit wary of leaving them on the Science Junior like that, but it, it's only happened once. Do we even have a... Did I pull... Where's the heat shield? Oh, right. What am I thinking? This is stock. This is stock. I don't have to worry about deadly re-entry. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Don't, no, don't need to worry about that. Batteries stay. Uh, now, this, this launcher is a bit underpowered right now. So, what I would like to do is perhaps add some more of these liquid mount engines at the bottom here. Uh, if it'll let me. Weak. Haha. -ha. There we go. That might be too close. Uh, change of plan. No, oh, no. Okay, I'll put four of them first. And then two more. Like so. Not a particularly efficient arrangement, but the way it was going before was very much not efficient because it was taking too long to get out of the thicker part of the atmosphere. And uh, that leads to gravity losses. So we're going to name this Theta 2. 
and hopefully Theta-2 will be able to get us to Gilly. We've got some science on there. Do we need to add some more science? Well, because this didn't have the science I had before, I, I didn't save that other one, I think. So I think I need to slap some more. Uh, seismic... Yeah, I guess we're going to need at least one of those. If we're going to actually make the landing on Gilly. Why is this... A symmetry. Just one ladder on each side, thanks. Not each side. Just one ladder. One ladder. Alright. Mm. And then two barometers should be fine. Oh, I can't use symmetry on it though. Okay, I think we're fully kitted out here. Can this make the, make it to Gillian back? I don't know. One thing's for sure, we need to do some time warping to get into the correct position. So let me uh, go to the go to mission control and see how to do that. Okay, here's the flag on the moon, and so we're gonna do the usual thing where we use that to do the time warping for us. And we need Eve to be behind. Kerbin by about 55 degrees. So let's time warp to that point. It's eventually gonna catch up to us. Okay, well, a little bit more perhaps. Alright, it needs to be a little bit more than a 45 degree angle. Okay, protractor time. Let's see. Oh, this, this still looks around 70 degrees. Alright. Tough to see sometimes. How about now? No, that's 60. I need it at 55. Just a few more days. Okay, well that better be it, because it's getting, getting a bit close. Let's see. Alright, I think I'll take that. Alright, so let's launch. Okay, so... Theta 2 wants to give us Bill Kerman. But I think uh, for this one... I, I don't remember using Melzer Kerman. Let's use Melzer Kerman. Alright, let's launch this. Alright, so here's Melzer Kerman on his way to the EVE system to EVE's moon of Gilly. Throttle is up. SAS is on. Melzer looks fine. And launch. Well, we're not in position to burn for EVE directly. We will have to make orbit first. Actually, uh, let me just show you. Uh, we are going to have to burn against Kerbin's orbit. So we have to burn in this direction. So naturally, what we need to be is on this side of the planet, roughly around here. So if uh, the KSC was at this point here, then we would have been able to burn directly into a path to uh, to go for Eve, but right now we are not. I think I can drop these other pods. Yep. Yeah. A high orbit is. Perhaps not useful in terms of the Oberf effect, but good because otherwise we might end up 
intercepting the planet, though this is not what I wanted. Uh, yeah, we'll wait to apoapsis. It's not too bad. Uh, I'll keep the periapsis low and then we'll be able to make use of the Oberth effect somewhat. Not the ideal situation, but but not too bad either. So let's just bring the periapsis to about, uh, let's say, uh, 90, 90 kilometers. And if we could burn out from right around there, that would be great. Let's see. Okay, yeah. Nope, I see it. Something around there. All right. Let's actually just turn our thing like that. Doesn't seem to quite help. Close, closer. Maybe a little bit more on this side. Very close. Oh, there we go. That'll be fine. Uh, looks like it's basically a burn for the moon uh, not not too much more than uh, Minmus really and that's actually because our uh, apoapsis is a bit high and uh, we are doing the burn low close to Kerbin so we get all the benefit of that and it only costs us 900 meters per second to get to Eve it will take us some effort to well uh, Eve does have that thick atmosphere though I don't want to dip too far into it before uh, so I might have to do some some retro burning. I don't want to end up landing on Eve. Uh, that is not a recoverable situation, not with this rocket anyway. All right, so all is good. Uh, let's just wait for our maneuver. I wonder if our electric charge is going to hold out for all that. Well, uh, we do have the solar panels, so it shouldn't be a bad thing. Should be all right. We're still on the launcher stage, so we've got the poodle to boost us the rest of the way to Eve. Make sure we're not intercepting the atmosphere. Everything looks good. Okay, just bring it in closer. Nope, it's not getting any closer. Let me, let me try some of the other directions to see how much we can adjust this. Not too much. Let me go radial this way. Not radial. Oh, is it radial? No, no, this is the inclination one. All right, that looks like as close as we're going to get here. So out to the mid-course burn point. All right, everybody, uh, let's see, where's Kerbin? Come on, Kerbin. All right, let's say goodbye to Kerbin. Whoa. All right, off we go. Okay, so applying to mid-course burn. There's really not much of an inclination difference between us and Eve right now, so it's not going to be a big benefit. But it'll, it'll probably bring us into the atmosphere or something like that. Okay, that was the wrong way to do it. Okay, well this will dip me into Eve's atmosphere, so that's, that's good. Uh, I haven't been to Eve before. I have done some calculations about its atmosphere that suggest that about 56 kilometers is equivalent to Kerbin's 30 kilometers, but I'm not going to be, I'm going to probably be 
a little bit conservative about that. And if I I've got fuel, so if I need to, I will retro burn. All right. Well, if it's going to give me 400 kilometers from out here, that's good enough for me. We'll uh, make the final adjustment once we get in. Oh, I I said I hadn't been to Eve, but it just I just remembered that I, that's not true. I have been to Eve before. I did land a rover on it, uh, somewhat unintentionally. I if I I forget what the circumstances were. It's it's in one of my videos. I did put a rover down on Eve. Okay, now I need to adjust my inclination here because this is not going to be good for intercepting Gilly, which is over there. So let's make sure our inclination is happy. And that looks about right. I'm going to aim for 70 kilometers. I think that'll be safe. Uh, well, it's going to be somewhat inclined anyway, so I'm going to have to adjust it. But let's go for this. Oop, I passed my maneuver, but it's only a 2.4 meter per second maneuver, so it shouldn't be too bad. Let's just make sure it's right. Alright, that's... let's get rid of it. Okay, let's see what happens when I dip 70 kilometers into Eve's atmosphere. Uh, say kilometers from the surface of Eve. Uh, I hope this isn't what I did with that rover. Uh, point prograde just in case I have to do an emergency burn to save us. Oh, uh, I need to do some experiments, don't I? Phew, come on. Uh, let's see. Log temperature? Near Eve now. We'll have to get another one further out. So 56. Uh, how about a goo experiment? Let's do this goo. Uh, the goo takes on a purple coloration. Is it just the lighting or did it change color? 70? Okay. And before we get to the atmosphere, how about an EVA? Uh, you've recorded your observations about the situation. Yep, keep data and board. Thank you, Meltzer. Me yeah, Meltzer. Continue pointing prograde. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this into EVE orbit in this episode. But then, uh, then transfer to Gilly and do all the Gilly stuff in the next episode. And then bring it back in the next episode. I think that's fair. Don't want this to get too long. All right. Uh, well, here's the critical part, though. Can we aero break at Eve successfully without crashing into the surface? We are going in those first, just to make sure I can burn to save it if necessary. Uh, again, uh, not something you'd do without uh, uh, with um, Delhi reentry, but thankfully I don't have to worry about that. Hmm, we might need to dip further in, actually. From the look of it, we're not slowing down nearly enough. I can correct that as well. And... hopefully. Thirty-five seconds, and we're nowhere near making orbit. Alright, yes, I'm going to turn retrograde. Okay, we have made orbit. 
Uh, the inclination with respect to Gilly isn't great. And we've pa passed our periapsis, so that's fine. We should be in a good orbit now. Best thing to do would be to correct the inclination as far out as possible from Eve. Eve does have a higher gravity than Kerbin does. So uh, inclination changes close to Eve are inadvisable. They would cost quite a lot more than uh, even the similar inclination change around Kerbin. So anyway, uh, let me set target for Eve and make sure that our 28 degrees, wow. Anyway, uh, try and fix that. We do have to get pretty close because Gilly is not a, not a big body and so it can't really suck us in unless we are pretty close to its inclination. And that's too much. Alright, that looks like about as good as I'm going to get. I'm going to keep the orbit loose, for obvious reasons, since we're going to be burning for a ghillie anyway. And we're probably going to be expanding our, or our orbit out of Eve's atmosphere when we get to our apoapsis, and then once we get to our periapsis, we'll burn for Eve to do the whole Oberth effect thing. Alright. Well, it's an inclination change. I'm going in the wrong circle. All right, 40 minutes, let's take the outside view. Departing Eve for the moment. And uh, perhaps an EV report is called for once we get a little bit further out. Do you suppose this is high over Eve yet? Let's wait till 500 kilometers. Okay, why don't we check for EVA report? Yeah, we're high over Eve now, all right, board. Can we get a temperature reading here? High over Eve and everything. How about barometer reading? We haven't tried that. Log temperature? No. Well, if temperature doesn't work, barometer probably won't. Yeah. Well, we're going to be getting closer into Eve soon anyway. Oh, ah, the, the EVA changed my situation. Actually, it looks like our uh, inclination burn has already boosted us into a safe orbit around Eve. Our periapsis is 290 kilometers now. So I'm just going to keep things like this. And in the next episode, I will try to bring Melzer Kerman into Gilly for landing. We will try to land on Gilly, which is going to be uh, amusing because I think the landing... Uh, just orbit around Gilly takes like... Uh, is about 20 meters per second or something like that. So... It'll be an amusing time. And then, of course, we have to also return home. Melzer does not look happy, but uh, I think we can manage this. Uh, but we'll find out next time. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do press like. And if you want to continue following my little adventures in stock Kerbal Space Program 0.23, do consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time.